What's going on, guilty guys and gals? We are back for more trial. There can't be much more, right? I'm not going to have to redo another section of the trial just to do another episode, am I? <sighs> we'll see. <laughs> right, right. That's what we're doing. Did you just say I'm the culprit? What? Mitsuhiro? Hey, hey! Hold on! How does that make me the culprit? None of the guys have the ability to throw a rubber ball exactly where it needs to be targeted with enough power to burst it. But if we're talking about kicking, kicking a ball with that much strength and accuracy wouldn't be impossible for you, right? Especially when you're the ultimate soccer player. <sighs> Mitsuhiro's talent was said to be almost on par with that of many professional soccer players. It makes sense for an expert like him to handle a much smaller and lighter ball with such ease. No! Wrong, wrong, wrong! Keep quiet! If you're not an expert, so soccer balls and rubber balls are different! And I can't do all that even with a soccer ball! Mitch, but you did that thing on Fuji TV's The Master's Challenge! You were the special guest for the game, where you had to dribble all kinds of balls and land it on a target. Did you have no problems with a rubber ball there? You even did it with a freaking pee! <laughs> yeah, I saw that episode in the hospital. He easily scored a goal with a soccer ball, then did the same with ping pong balls, shuttlecocks, and one of those large exercise balls, I believe. Could you even... I guess you can do that. I actually used to... We used to see how many times we could keep up one of those little ten, or badminton, you know. <laughs> and you're saying you can't kick rubber balls? Try a better joke. Don't quit your day job. Uh, 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 that was... Uh, that was all fake! It, it was scripted! How would that even be possible in real life? D do you think I'm a god or something? Whoa, big scandal alert. M Mitch... Are you really the culprit? Did you kill Kyoka? Yeah, plus wasn't he the one who said the killer had to be among the girls? No, that, it's a, that's just a trap! I know, Yuki's the culprit! He, he's trying to accuse me with no evidence whatsoever! Mitch, it's over. Please, just say it. I don't want to do this any longer. Say what? I didn't kill anyone. And what does it have to be me? Do you have any proof? Do you have any kind of evidence that I killed someone? Mitsuhiro, I doubt you would ever act like this if you weren't the culprit. And you seem to be able to perform that trick using the rubber ball that Yuki mentioned. Th that's... that was... This is ridiculous! It's pure speculation! Show me some proof! Mitch seems really messed up right now. Maybe it's because he's going to die. But it's true that my argument doesn't have a solid backup. I thought of it by process of elimination, not through the evidence. Still, it should be somewhere. That one piece of evidence that can nail him down is the killer. I need to point that out, or else we won't get anywhere. What, what minigame? Oh, this is, this is non-stop debate. Okay. All right, let's see what we got here. To working with <laughs> blood stain near body to Ruya's account. Okay, that's it. Um, probably to Ruya's account. We haven't used. I don't think we've used either of these yet, actually. To be fair, but uh, we'll see what they say. I think it's probably going to be to Ruya's account. All right, let's see. Show me the evidence! <laughs> yeah, okay. I can easily prove myself not guilty, you know. Is there evidence that I put the note in Kyoka's room? I thought it was hidden behind there for a second. How will you prove that I got those tools from the antique store? Yeah, so it is true, yeah. Okay. Where's the evidence that I hanged Kyoka? 
You can't see any of those for sure. Am I wrong? Now stop bothering me! Wow, it's a non-stop debate with just one person talking. That's pretty odd. Not much of a debate. Huh? <laughs> I remember talking about where the tools came from. Oh, okay, so that's that's that that's where we're going for this part. Gotcha. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Ray's still laughing. <laughs> clock, clock down. All right, give me the one I need. Give me what I need. Got him. Break, 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 break. Wait, Mitch, something's off in your statement. Huh? What's off? I don't see anything wrong in it. I know we talked about the culprit using the hook and the rubber ball earlier, but... We didn't mention where they got those from. How did you know that those tools were for the antique store? Uh, what? <laughs> because, uh, that's where most of the tools are, right? Yeah, I just thought the antique store was a good place for them to get it from. Personal opinion. That makes zero sense. You only find hooks and rubber balls in storage, not the antique store. Yeah, and doesn't the gym have loads of balls, too? Uh, you see, <laughs> you never know. Both the storage and the antique store might have those. Uh, that's why I mentioned the antique store. It, it looked like that place had practically everything. <laughs> Mitch, we know. One of us has been keeping track of every single item in the storage and antique store. Am I right, Teruya? Huh? <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, Yuki. Uh, is this why you asked me about this? Uh, trust me, the antique store definitely had hooks and rubber balls. I know, because I spent most of my time hanging out in there. Also, I'm pretty sure there weren't any hooks or rubber balls in the storage. The ones used in the murder from the antique store. The way those items were arranged changed after the murder. Whoa, Teruya, you memorized all of that? Wow, what a freak. Uh, but I'm saving your lives. Yeah, I need to take a drink. Wait to my whistle. Okay. D sh shut up! It's just a coincidence. And you still didn't show me proof. Show me evidence. Tangible evidence. Not your stupid guesses. I'm not buying it. You're doing this to the wrong person. Jeez. Can't you just be a man and say you did it? Hey, Mitsuhiro. Will you admit it if we show you evidence? That you're the culprit. I'm not the culprit. There's no evidence. You can't say I did it. Give me the proof. Proof, proof, proof. If he insists, then we'll have to show him. Yuki, show him the proof you have. Huh? <laughs> Why me again? I have the proof? Be patient and think. You do have it. You even showed it to us a little while ago. I showed the proof to everyone? Is he talking about... I see. I didn't think about it back then, but that can certainly nail Mitch down. I've got to show him what that is. I have no idea what they're talking about. Oh, something new. Terminate talk shooting. Sure, tell me about it. <laughs> this is like bullet time battle. You must overturn the opponent's baseless arguments by shooting them down and ultimately come up with a conclusive evidence to silence them. When your opponent's speech bubble appears, you can con press confirm to destroy it. If not destroyed, a speech bubble will eventually disappear and inflict some damage to you. Each speech bubble has a certain amount of health represented by a number of objects at its top. Okay, interesting. If you're out of ammunition, you need to replenish it before shooting again. I wish it was space and not shift, but okay, that's fine. Your opponent... Actually, I'll put my other finger on it. Your opponent will take damage every time a speech bubble gets destroyed. If they're out of health, you'll be given a chance to deliver the final blow by combining words into the size of evidence. Nice. But be wary. If your health reaches zero, your influence gauge will take damage. You must start over. Okay. I like how the music doesn't change. It just sends you, like, straight into it. That's pretty cool. Terminate talk shooting. I will terminate <laughs> Mitsuhiro. <laughs> 
Can't believe you got an entire land dedicated to you, dude. Should have dedicated it to Kyoka. Jeez. Coming into focus! Okay. Oh, I get it. So it's like based on who they. Oh, that's cool. It just goes pretty easily. Hello? You dirty bastard! I forgot I was supposed to be reading those. Yuki, you dirty bastard! Damn it, I'm not the killer! You don't have proof! Please actually shoot. This is a trap! Damn. Give me the proof! 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 I don't have any bullets. I'm not the killer. Yeah, yeah. Do 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 do. These are some of my favorite Danganronpa songs. Hello, thank you. Shoot, please, Jesus. Show me physical proof. Fuck off. <laughs> Okay, what is it gonna be? Show me physical proof. The notepads Monikuma gave up. Apparently you can't do it very fast. <laughs> I tried to like combo it. Hey look, it's the high fidelity sprites again. I think that's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. HD. Doom do 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 do. If you want it, then I'll show you tangible evidence that can prove you guilty. <laughs> Which obviously doesn't exist, you moron. It does exist. Remember when I showed you the note to explain how the culprit called Kyoka to the laundry room? The paper used for the note was from the notepad given to us by Monokuma. Which means... We can see if that note was from your notepad by checking if there are any torn pages in there. What? <laughs> Uh -huh. Mom, it's a hero. It's the evidence you've been asking for. Hey, you. This evidence? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. We got those like a week ago. Anyone could have torn out a page for who knows what. Huh? Anyone could have used it? Then we can try matching Yuki's note with the torn section in your notepad. That way, we'll be clear on whether it was from your notepad or not. Well... But, hey, don't you think the culprit could have used someone else's notepad? How can you be so sure it was from mine? No way, idiots. The notepads were in the drawer in our rooms. How are you going to get into one without the owner's permission? And if the owner somehow gave permission, even better. That would automatically mean the person who asked for permission is the culprit. Wait, I... well, uh... That's... Mitch, just admit it. I don't want us to... I don't want us to keep fighting each other like this. Uh. <laughs> it's over then. Over? Who said it's over? <laughs> Nothing's over! This is a lie. It's all one big lie. How dare you accuse a superstar like me of murder! Liar, liar, liar! Okay, I guess we're still doing this. All right, if you say so, I'll go over the case from beginning to end. Then you'll have to accept it. If that you're the only possible culprit, Mitch. Sure, how does this one work? Recap the whole case, yes, of course. Bottom of your screen are several pictures. Select one by pressing Z enter space. Press confirm again on the blank panel to fill it in. Okay, cool. Do not be penalized for wrong answers. There's no pesky time limits either. So take the time you need. That's kind of nice. Because, I mean, you've already got all the things now. You just have to sift through all this. Ah. The culprit slipping the note through the gap. Culprit nervously waiting for the body to be found. Squeezing the rope around Kyoka's neck. She was already dead at this time. Remember to clean up after everything. Uh oh, the nameplates were switched. And Kyoko was ambushed from her back, not knowing the name of her killer nor the reason she was attacked. So, looks... Uh-oh, nameplates were switched. Uh, oh, okay. So, it, yeah, we can progress. That's that's fine. Um, slipping the note under the door. I think that's the first one. Uh, 
Uh, there's nothing missing here. Kyoka getting attacked from behind. Uh, here. Uh, then... Remembering to clean up after everything. <laughs> then the weird ball trick. Which meant Kyoka was all tied up. And then... This. Whoa, I like that cut in. <laughs> I love the song. Okay. It all started last night. But we were all in shock by Monokuma's motives. Kyoka, Haru, and Satsuki decided to hang out together to distract themselves from the stress. They ran around in the hallway until Haru accidentally broke two of the nameplates on the wall. <clears throat> The two nameplates belonged to Kyoka and Tsurugi. Haru was panicking over breaking school property, and when Monokuma showed up to give him a warning, he didn't punish Haru since it was an accident. Instead, he ordered him to replace the broken nameplates with new ones. And here's where Haru made a crucial mistake. After a trip to the restroom, he got confused about where the two nameplates originally were. Smack. <laughs> he finally chose to go with his gut instincts, which unfortunately turned out to be wrong. This is when Kyoka and Tsurugi's nameplates were switched around. Haru went to his room right after putting the nameplates back, and the nighttime hallway was left empty at this very moment. Wah. Someone had decided against going to sleep, and was out in the hallway secretly heading somewhere. Um. <laughs> the place they were heading was Surugi's room. For some reason, they had chosen Surugi to be their target of murder. But there was something they were unaware of. Right before they had come down the hallway, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think right before they came makes any. Anyway, the nameplates outside Surugi and Kyoka's rooms were switched by Haru. So the culprit had actually gone to Kyoka's room. Sneak. <laughs> Unaware of the error, the culprit made their first move. They put a note through the gap below the door. It asked that person to come to the laundry room at 6 a.m. and contained a lot of false information to make things easier for the culprit. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Not everyone would be asleep right after nighttime, and it'd be easy to spot a note coming through the door. That's what the culprit was hoping for. The next day, as the time approached 6 o'clock, Kyoka, after reading the note, came to the laundry room as she'd been instructed. <laughs> the culprit was hiding in the corner of the room, waiting for an opportunity to strike. Since they were expecting to see Tsurugi, Kyoka's sudden appearance would have been a surprise for them. You know, I wonder. Would there would not your initial thought be that Kyoka being the early bird she was, that when she came in, that she was going to be a problem? Did they, like, kill her and then think, I'm going to have to kill Surugi too when he comes in here. He'll find the evidence. I don't know. I feel like that would probably be the case. Kyoka continued forward, oblivious of her fate. The culprit was probably confused at first, then either noticed that they somehow went to the wrong room or found Kyoka holding the note. Grrr. They likely had a plan in mind, and changing the target meant they had to risk ruining everything. But there was also the potential of being found out and facing the aftermath if they let her go. At last, the culprit decided to change their target. They'd already got the weapon ready, and it looked like they'd be discovered anyway. Meanwhile, Kyoka was wondering why no one was in the room. Still unaware of the presence of her culprit, or of the culprit, she was left vulnerable to their attack. And fell victim to it.
Wipe, wipe, wipe. After the murder, the culprit wiped off the blood from the body to conceal any evidence of the murder. It was almost done immediately afterwards, so Kyoka's clothes didn't get any blood on them. However, they weren't able to take care of the large bloodstain on the floor, maybe because they were in a hurry or they failed to see it. Or, alternatively, I'm just saying they thought Tsurugi was going to show up any minute. <laughs> the bloodstain played a large role in revealing Kyoka was murdered in the laundry room. I think the culprit forgot about the bloodstain while they were busy moving Kyoka's body. They must have gotten into a panic since they killed someone that wasn't part of their plan. The culprit first carried the body over to the girls' restroom. Their purpose was to take advantage of the fact that students aren't allowed to enter the restroom of the opposite sex. That's when the culprit found the pipe on the ceiling of the restroom. Hee <laughs> hee! The culprit decided to make use of it and went to the antique store to get the needed supplies. Yeah, they just left Kyoka's body in the middle of the hallway. Thank goodness, thank goodness none of us found it, huh? <laughs> it was less than an hour before the wake-up announcement, so they were probably in a rush. The tools they chose were a rope, a hook, and a rubber ball. That still doesn't make any sense to me. The culprit first tied the rope around the rubber ball, then thought of a certain way to hide their involvement. Their idea was to... Kick. <laughs> Tie the rope on the pipe without entering the girl's restroom, using the rubber ball. Since the culprit was a man, they were unable to enter the girl's restroom themselves. Monokuma had previously announced that anyone who sets foot in the restroom of the opposite sex would be shot by machine guns. But thanks to the fact that the restroom entrance was open, with a wall straight across, the culprit was able to tie the rope to the pipe using the elasticity of the rubber ball. It was a risky move, as the culprit wasn't able to step inside to correct any mistakes, and making the ball bounce right through that small gap seemed nearly impossible. But the culprit was confident they could do it. This is because, as the ultimate soccer player, they had absolute mastery over all types of balls. Oh, did they? <laughs> the rubber ball bounced across the room and right back to the entrance, just as they'd planned. The culprit repeated this several times to make it look as if someone had tied the rope by hand. And this is when another unexpected event happened. They must have failed to adjust for the strength of their kicks, because the rubber ball grew weaker and weaker after each bounce until... It couldn't withstand the pressure and popped. This caused the liquid inside the ball to be splattered all over the restroom, becoming a key piece of evidence. The culprit would have wanted to get rid of it, but they couldn't do it without going inside of the restroom. Now they get another ball, and this time they tie a little bit of cleaning fluid. <laughs> As a joke. The culprit nonetheless decided to go on with their plan. After all, they succeeded in tying the rope to the pipe, and the method they had used was virtually unimaginable for a normal person. After getting the rope around the pipe, the culprit removed the ball from the rope and attached the hook instead. Then they threw the hook toward the pipe to fasten the rope on it. The other end of the rope that was left outside the restroom was wrapped around Kyoka's neck. The reason for this was to make it look like Kyoko hang was hanged inside the restroom. The culprit was hoping to make us think that Kyoka's murderer was inside the girl's restroom and naturally able to enter it as well. That way, men wouldn't be considered suspects in the trial. The culprit, as a man, was trying to use this for their own favor. Everything was ready, and as the culprit was about to push Kyoka inside, they found a piece of paper in her hand. It was the note they'd wrote, held tight in her hand, even after death. Having realized the note would be used against them if discovered, the culprit ripped the note out of her hand, but they ripped it possibly because of rigor mortis, which made it difficult to pull it all out. Um... <laughs> What the culprit didn't know was that most of the important parts of the note were still intact in the piece they'd left in Kyoka's hand. Thanks to the note, we found out she wasn't murdered in the restroom, which led to the conclusion the culprit could be a man as well. <laughs> 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 
After getting over... Getting the risky part over and done with, the culprit tried to get rid of the hammer and the rubber ball, but too much time had passed at this point, and it was early enough for some of us to be waking up. <coughs> Sneak. In a hurry, the culprit left their murder weapon and the burst rubber ball in the garbage dump. They would have wanted a safer option, but the time constraint gave us little time to think. Just put them in your room. Like, I know that seems stupid, because, like, if they check your room, but... Given that, you know, they didn't, <laughs> and I've never been in half of these people's rooms, just hide them in your room somewhere. I honestly think that would be the best option. Either that, or just leave them in the bathroom. It's not like they can do fingerprint analysis or something like that. Take the rubber ball out, but leave the hammer. That would diffuse suspicion, right? They must have thought we wouldn't find them if they put it alongside all the trash. And... It kind of worked, since Kakaru and I were the only ones to discover them. <laughs> when we started coming out of our rooms, the culprit acted as if they had just gotten up and waited for the body to be discovered. Yeah. <laughs> we soon noticed that Kyoka was nowhere to be seen. As we all know, we went looking around the entire building until Akane discovered... the horrible state Kyoka was in. Everyone froze in shock, and while pretending to do the same, the culprit secretly hid a smile at the outcome of their plan. The person who came up with this plan had tried to deceive us all. Here it comes. Whoa! Oh man, is this going to lag too because of the spinning effect? I don't know why it has so much trouble with the spinning effect. Oh my god. Whoa. That's that's trippy, alright. <laughs> I feel like I'm being hypnotized. Oh my god, here he comes. Red card. <laughs> You're out. That's actually really funny. I like that a lot. <laughs> the whistle blows too. It was you, right? Mitsuhiro Higa. Break. Done and done. That was that, Mitch. Do you still have anything left to say? <laughs> you must have forgotten how to speak. <laughs> was that a joke about her? Okay. What kind of nonsense is that? This is just purely outrageous. Jam! Purely outrageous. True. Anyway. Mitsuhiro, it's over. Please be honest. It's pointless for us to keep attacking each other. Mitsuhiro, was it really you? Why? Why did you commit something like murder? No, it wasn't me. I'm not... It's not me. It's not me. Not me, not me, no, 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 no. Well, this idiot is going crazy. Oh my, oh my god, Mitsuhiro is totally gone wacko! <laughs> Did I win? 855 point? Wow! Not even 85 mana coins, only 71. Sad. <laughs> Oh man, now I have to do Monokuma's voice? Okay, hold on. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm ready. Huh? It looks like you're done. As the headmaster, let me say your discussions were packed with a passion in a fashionable way. Hmm? Passion and fashion? Are they the same? Are they different? <laughs> oh, who cares? You don't need any of those to live a good life anyway. 
So let's get to voting time. You don't need any extra explanations, right? Pick the person you believe is the blackened. Everyone, make your choice using the switch in front of you. Oh, and one more thing, just as a reminder. Triple check you voted for someone. If I ever see a blank ballot, you know what that means. I'm sure none of you would like to be punished for something so trivial. Okay, time to get excited. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Got it. <laughs> you can see like a little bit of artifacting. That's funny. Wow, look at all those potatoes falling out of there. They look like scalloped potatoes to me. <laughs> I know they're supposed to be coins. I know, but they look like scalloped potatoes. Ooh, bingo! The back end of this trial, that is, the murderer who killed Kyokamaki, is none other than Mitsuhiro Higa. What? Hold on. Mr. Higa, did you really... Mitch, why'd you kill her? Tell us. I was, like, a big fan of yours. I like soccer, too. I admired your talent as a rising star. Why'd you have to... Cut it out and say something. <clears throat> Fine. I killed Kyokamaki. Are you serious? <laughs> Finally. Mitsuhiro... Assuming everything we found out is true, you murdered Kyoki even though she wasn't your target. I'm not saying it was okay for you to set up a murder, but you could have quit and spared Kyoka if your plan went wrong. Why didn't you do that? Why? Why were you so stubborn about killing someone? Kyoka, she did nothing to you. But... I just had to get out of here after watching that video! That video? Just as I thought. It's the only possible answer. You mean... the motive? Monokuma just shown us that DVD yesterday. The contents must have been different for each student, but... every one of them seemed enough to drive a person toward despair. Yeah, I remember. When I watched my video, I felt myself wrapped up by a surge of emotion, demanding me to escape here by any means possible. Even I pondered the thought of murder. Mitch must have killed due to those same reasons. I'm aware of how serious a crime it is. Even a million apologies won't be enough for what I did. But I had to do it! I had to get out of this place, and for that I had to murder. Mitch our hero! You bastard! <laughs> I don't know what you saw in your video, but can you even guess what was on mine? Every soccer stadium in the world being reduced to ashes. Terrorists attacking FIFA headquarters and world-class soccer players haven't gone missing. On top of that, my old team was also... You're kidding me, right? Not even like your family or your teammates or your coach or your friends. Literally just random soccer players who you knew? <laughs> How could such a thing be possible? I'm sorry. That's exactly like my case. Not really. <laughs> oh, this can't be good. It seems like something's occurred to the well-being of Yuki Maeda's warm and caring family. What could have possibly happened at his house? To Mitsuhiro, soccer must have been like the home where he belongs. Witnessing his own sweet home being completely destroyed would feel... Seriously, though, it should have been his team or his coach or something. Attack on FIFA HQ? Come on! You know that's other nonsense. Right, and it doesn't only pertain to yours. All of our videos were manipulated. You shouldn't have fallen for this trap. Ugh. I couldn't stop trembling after watching my video, and it was just as shocking and terrifying as yours. It's not like it was just you. It was everyone's fight, even Kyoka's. Even though she watched the same absurd video, she was trying to overcome it. You asshole! <laughs> I couldn't help it. Soccer's my everything. I'd even say it's more important to me than my life. I know murder's wrong, but 
But I just had to see with my own eyes if that video was real, even if it meant killing another person. Let me ask you one thing. Suppose that your plan went without a hitch and you got out. What if you found out the video was forged? Then what were you going to do? You heard about the class trial and the entrance ceremony, didn't you? The victory of the Blackened is equivalent to the death of everyone else. My point is, by setting off your murder plan, you opted to take the lives of us fourteen for your own needs. But you were aware of the full weight of your choice, or at least prepared to face the consequences. I doubt it. Um... You know what I want to say? You're nothing more than an ignorant moron who wanted to get out of here using soccer as an excuse. Uh... Of course our videos were shocking as yours. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a motive. If that alone was sufficient to make a person murder, all of us would have done it by now. But in reality, you were the one to commit the crime. What do you think made us different? Could it be prioritizing your selfish desires over your so-called friends? Ray, stop it! Don't try to make this any more complicated. <laughs> Are you telling me this idiot got shocked by the DVD and just went to murder someone without even being mentally prepared? No, I won't deny that, but soccer really was my everything. Actually, it was pretty well planned out. I even managed to come up with a complex trick immediately after murdering Kyoka. Or he did, not me. I didn't do that. Surugi being his initial target doesn't look like a coincidence either. You thought his talent would be an obstacle to your plan, didn't you? Uh... Bullseye, I suppose. <laughs> We're all just demeaning him. I mean, he had it coming. Right. From the beginning, Mitch was willing to murder, even without the motive. A malice beyond description. That's what took Yoka's life. But... So what? Does it even matter? Monokuma's the ultimate ringleader behind all of this. Monokuma's the one who drove Mitch to that point. You know what, Mitch? Right after watching The Motive, Kyoka told me this. Well, told me, Haru, and Satsuki this. I didn't know where that was going. Murder, motives, anxiety. Just push him to the side and have fun. That way you can all chill out and strengthen our bond. Kyoka probably got the same amount of shock as you, but she was willing to overcome this situation by getting everyone together. If she had a chance to talk with you yesterday, maybe things would have been different. Uh, I don't give a crap. <laughs> Why? Isn't it so frightening? Who would have guessed that world-class celebrity is nothing more than a bad-tempered coward? This is why you should never judge a book by its cover. No one would ever thought THE Mitch Higa could murder. What? What are you talking about? It's your fault. This entire situation. Mitch's murder. It's all your fault. How can you even say that? Ah, oh, well, don't be so salty. What's done is done. Don't you got a carpe diem? I can't imagine Monokuma saying salty. <laughs> He'd be like, don't be such a prude. Oh, what's up with that attitude? If you're trying to fight me, give up. You'll probably end up hanging out with your dead friend anyway. Haha, <laughs> that was a joke about suicide. Okay, besides, you guys don't scare me at all. Shut up, Monokuma. I don't know where you got the balls for that, but someday I'll bring you to justice myself. Oh, Sarugi may be an exception. Gee, look how long you guys have been holding me back. Well, we better get started. Started on what? The punishment. What else would it be? I told you, punishment awaits the loser of the class trial. Punishment? You mean execution? J just give me a sec. Uh, of course I'm guilty. I deserve death. I deserve any kind of punishment. I know I can't ever make up for my crime, but... Uh, but still, you're really gonna kill me? Sure, I kill Kyoka, but isn't this a bit different? Seriously, you're just gonna take my life? <laughs> I, I can explain. I must have really been crazy. I I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. I can rot in jail for the rest of my life. Just don't kill me. Yeah, I'll do anything you want. You can have all the money I earned for playing soccer, okay? I don't want to die. Help me. I'll do anything but dying. I'm begging you, please. Hey guys, do something! I'm about to die for real! This isn't a joke! 
Notwithstanding, wow, what a word. Notwithstanding Mitch's desperate cries, everyone turned their heads away from him, including myself. <laughs> What's this? Are you afraid of dying? Weren't you ready for this when you became the Blackened? Above all, you disrupted order. You killed Kyoka. Whatever the laws outside may be, the rule here is simple. An eye for an eye, a death for a death. No matter what you do, you can't avoid punishment. Once you're revealed to be the Blackened, you're punished. It's an iron-bound rule. Now, save your breath and let us begin. I certainly wouldn't want my students to procrastinate. So, I've prepared a special punishment for the Blackened, Mitsuhiro Higa, the ultimate soccer player. No! Go away! Go away! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Come on, you couldn't get that line right. No! Hopefully this doesn't lag. It shouldn't, it's a pre-made video. Not the smoothest transition, but hey, I'm surprised they got that going pretty well. Ooh. This is pretty fancy, too. <laughs> familiar. Okay, that's different. <laughs> okay, no, it's still familiar. Red card. Excellent. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> now, does that really make sense? No, but I guess here we are. Wait, he's the ball? Nice. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> death. The volcano death shot? I think that makes more sense than anything else. Do we at least get a final shot of like the ball flying by while being made of fire? <laughs> Tree is making his silly surprise face. <clears throat> oh god, everything's on fire. Hmm. <laughs> Obviously the executions of the second game are better, but interesting concept anyway. Yeehaw! That's it, yes! This thrill, this excitement, you can only feel this at punishment time! Oh, oh, Mitch! Mitch is... dead. It happened in an instant. Mitsuhiro Yiga, who was alive and breathing merely minutes ago, now greeted us in death amidst scorching flames across the screen. Despair. That was exactly what came up in our minds. Mitsuhiro committed murder. Of course he was unforgivable, but... But this is too harsh! We have to keep doing this? I can't! Anyone, please, get me out of here! Oh, hi, Monokuma. <laughs> if you don't want this to happen, don't kill! None of this would happen if you simply stopped caring about the outside. After all, it was Mitsuhiro's own selfish desire that led him to murder. You guys were the ones responsible for this. But how could we just for, or how could we just forget about the outside world? It's impossible. Monokuma, what's your intention? What do you get from committing these heinous acts? Intention? Is that what? Intention? What? What? Why? Intention? Huh? What's that? Sounds too hard for me. Nobody cares anyway. You don't have to know it. Just heed my words and you all will be fine. 
Besides, you wouldn't even understand a word, even if I tell you. Not the slightest bit about what's going on right now, so it's a total waste of time. <laughs> you son of a... Oh no, how intimidating. <laughs> well, case closed. Class trial officially over. Everyone, rest in peace. <laughs> hey, wait! He's gone. Damn it. What are we supposed to do now? In, si in silence, everyone kept staring at the spot where Monokuma had been standing. Although the class trial was over, none of us looked eager to leave the courtroom. After losing two friends on a single day and realizing escape is so far out of our reach, we couldn't help but freeze in despair. Everyone, we need to stay calm. If we lose hope here, we won't accomplish anything. But my legs are moving after watching that execution. How are we supposed to stay calm when our friend has met such a horrible, horrible end? Friend? Who's this friend you're talking about? Um, at least Kyokamaki. What are you talking about? What? Huh? Who else could it be besides Mitsuhiro? You're calling him a friend? I don't get it. You calling a murderer your friend? What's wrong with you? <laughs> um, Tsurugi, I know Mitsuhiro killed Kyoka, and you deserved punishment, but you were still our friend for all those days, right? Yes, he was. Now he's only a criminal who got what he deserved for committing the worst possible crime on Earth. What's so surprising about that? You may argue that Mitsuhiro deserved the death penalty, but do you condone Monokuma's actions? Are you condoning Higa's murder? Yes, Monokuma killing him was also murder. Monokuma's a criminal worthy of death, too. But letting Higa live would just be absurd. There ought to be retribution for every murder. What the... Are you saying you're glad that Mitch died? Of course. No murderer has the right to live, regardless of how many they've killed. Oh, that's the Sarugi I know. <laughs> what? Sure, Sarugi said he despises criminals more than anything else, and that his dream is to end all crime in the world, but still, saying he's glad for someone's death, even if that someone was a murderer, that's insane. Would you also say killing a murderer is acceptable? No way. If you kill a criminal, you'd be a criminal too. However, wasn't Monokuma already a criminal to start with? When did I say I'll excuse Monokuma's actions? I'm just saying Kiga got what he deserved. I loathe that bear scum more than anything, but there's one thing he said I can agree on. An eye for an eye, a death for a death. That's my motto as a police officer. Um, okay, <laughs> great. Lunatic? Isn't it a bit problematic for a police officer to say that? <laughs> Why would it be problematic? I think the real problem is with the current legal system that doesn't let me murder people. I'm gonna work hard to change the laws in this country. No, the entire world. I'll create a world where no one dare commit crime. That's why I need to get out of this place. Same goes for you all. Stop thinking about that killer and strategize on how we'll fight Monokuma. I'm not supporting Mitsuhiro, but something is super wrong with you. Wrong? Tell me, the way you're acting is wrong. Or, to me, the way you're acting is wrong. Don't you realize you're already approving his actions by caring about his death? Criminal or not, somebody just died. How can you react like that when a human being was murdered right in front of you? How could I? Well, criminals don't count as human beings to me. Vidar? Tsuruki, what happened to you, man? You weren't like this. What do you mean? I've been like this the entire time. I'm just giving some advice to those of you who are being overly hysterical. Of course, I'm aware that I'm ultimately the one to blame. Kyokia wouldn't have... Kyokia? <laughs> Kyokia wouldn't have died if I'd been more alert. Therefore, from now on... I won't ever allow another murder to happen in this school, no matter what it takes. 
It's my duty to protect you all, isn't it? You! Stop. M Makako? She spoke. Everyone's exhausted. Let's go to our rooms and rest. Calm down. We can talk again tomorrow. Right. This mind-blowing incident got us all heated up. Let's cool our heads and talk again tomorrow. Fine. I don't think you can think logically in this condition either. Ugh. And thus, our first class trial came to a close on the worst possible note. If it wasn't for Makako, we might have broken out into an all-out fight. Somehow, it feels like everyone's gone crazy. No, maybe it's just me who's crazy. Two of us have died on a single day. It would be weird not to be crazy. Will we ever get out of this place? Will we ever escape this monstrous killing game? We took the elevator back to the school building and quietly dismissed ourselves. The atmosphere felt heavy, and a feeling of distrust seemed to pervade everywhere like it did on our first day. Hmm. Everything that happened today already feels like memories in a distant past. Surrounded by this bizarre environment, my sense of reality was slowly fading away. The day I left home for Hope Speak Academy, a week prior to today, seemed like it was a long time ago. I couldn't even recall how my parents looked. My family. Hmm. Huh. Yoga, the trial, Mitch, execution, Surugi. My brain drifted in confusion as these thoughts kept swirling around in my mind. And eventually, sleep. <laughs> we made it through our first class trial, the very embodiment of despair, without achieving anything. But this was merely the beginning of despair. Oh god! <laughs> that was a little loud. <laughs> Echoing despair. Despair! 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 I like this screen. For a lack of like the, the regular one, it's pretty decent. Thank you for playing. You've reached the end of the demo. You may choose to save your progress here, which will be allowed to continue this point with future releases. Well, we'll be there soon. Um, I've heard people don't like this trial. Ugh. For what reason is it? Is it just the logic is weak, or is it just because the, um, let, let's put it this way instead. Do, is the common consensus that the trial is just too straightforward in the sense that, you know, you kind of know who does it immediately, or is it the fact that it's overly contrived? Because I, I honestly don't feel it's necessarily either but then again i knew who it was coming in uh because i read the spark notes of the game essentially so maybe i was a little bit um more lenient on stuff that automatically would have uh told you who the killer was but i don't know i feel like the ball is the obvious like smoking gun evidence but that was at the very end it's at least not like leon's trial where you get that at the very beginning and then have to figure out like everything else afterwards knowing who it is um, I don't know. It was alright. But I can see where people might be going saying, like, this is a fan game. You don't have to start with, like, an easy trial. You could do something interesting. Um, which I think, as always, Straw 2 has a better first case, obviously. But that's experience for you. And, uh, you know. But yeah, I didn't think it was really that bad. Like, it's way better than the Leon Say Sayaka trial from the first game. And honestly, I think it might be on par with um, Teru Teru Imposter. Because the, the Sarugi thing at the end is basically like the Nagito thing at the end of that one. He's going to be a problem, folks. He's going to be a problem. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, 
I don't know if my progress will actually carry over to the next demo, which I've just realized and I'm fearing, but I got all of this weekend to work on it, because I'm not streaming tomorrow, it's Christmas on uh, Saturday, of course, so Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>